My name is James A. Hansen. I am the historian and publications editor for the Museum of the Fur Trade. And over the years, I've worked in a number of historical settings, institutions, but uh, I came back here and for the last 20 years, I've been the editor and the historian for the Museum of the Fur Trade. The fur trade is actually an outgrowth of Indian intertribal trade. Uh, in prehistoric times, Indians had vast networks of uh, commerce. When Europeans first discovered the new continent, they found that the Indians were fascinated with all the colorful cloth and uh, axes, knives, kettles. And so almost instantly, an important commerce grew up between native people who had things that Europeans wanted and the Europeans who furnished all these wonderful trade goods. It continued as an important industry in the continental United States up until after the Civil War. In Canada, the fur trade under the Hudson's Bay Company was significant until about 1900, and it lasted in places in Alaska into the 1950s. My father grew up on a pretty hard scrabble farm in Nebraska. He had a far-ranging interest in the world. And the local public library was very significant to him. And one year uh, he visited there and found books that uh, were written by a man named James Willard Schultz. And Schultz had lived with the Blackfeet Indians and he wrote a book about his experiences there. It was called My Life as an Indian. My father was so impressed with the book telling about what the Indians' attitudes were, what the fur traders supplied, uh, how that interchange worked. It wasn't the fur traders cheating the Indians, but rather they were working together in a symbiotic relationship. After World War II, Charles, my dad, uh, was going to graduate school at the University of uh, Colorado, and he heard about a trading post that had been reconstructed during WPA days in the 1930s. And so he got a group of like-minded persons to go visit about operating that as a historic site. Things didn't work out there, but the group of people spent five or six years looking at trading post sites from the Canadian border down into Oklahoma. And this site appealed to them because it was a small site built by a man named James Bordeaux as part of the American Fur Company. They acquired this site in uh, 1953. In the beginning, uh, things were, were looking up because donations began coming into the museum and uh, it's been uh, incrementally uh, improved over the last 60 years. Our exhibits cover everything from beads to blankets to guns to kettles. Uh, we do have the largest collection of Indian trade guns in existence. They date from before 1640 and continue up until after 1900. And then one thing that we started about 10 years ago, it was uh, Charles Hansen's idea to publish an encyclopedia of trade goods put everything we know, all of our research, into uh, a single significant source for just people interested in native culture. Well, to find the answers to the questions that the fur trade raises, we've had to go to uh, Europe, uh, especially England and France, collecting information about the goods that they produced, and, and then we have supplied that information to a number of uh, publishing companies over here, like uh, National Geographic and uh, Reader's Digest and so on. The purpose of our research is to determine two things that we talk about in this museum. One is the materials of the fur trade, and the second are the methods by which the fur trade operated, whether it was canoes, two-wheeled carts or steamboats. We're interested in how it affected the native culture. That's our principal goal. The Museum of the Fur Trade is unique. 
It's the only museum devoted to the whole history of the North American fur trade in all its aspects. And here, they're going to see things that they never even thought of, like a 36-foot birch bark canoe hanging from the ceiling. They'll learn about commerce and industry, trade with the Orient, textiles, clothing, Indian attitudes towards Europeans, and they'll learn about European attitudes towards native people as well. So this is a once, once in a lifetime chance, come see us.